Welcome back. ACC basketball, Syracuse Orangeman at Virginia Tech. Tuesday night, 9 o'clock, exclusively on WBBZ TV. Welcome back. I have with me now Mark Gaughan, who is the uh, beat writer of the uh, Buffalo News for the Buffalo Bills. And, Mark, uh, you know, the Bills season has been over for over a week, and so I'm sure you've had a lot of time to kind of sit back and think on what we saw over those uh, uh, 17 weeks. So, first off, your gut to... A 6-10 and ten season. Did the Bills make any progression this year? I think they made some progress. Um, uh, I, I was impressed with Marone, the way he handled himself, uh, the way he dealt with players, the way he communicated, sort of set the tone for the team. Um, I think uh, they have, uh, I thought the defense was uh, better, um, a lot better actually than it was last year. I mean, there was nowhere to go for, but up. Uh, after Dave Wonstadt's year. But I thought Mike Patton, uh, you know, <coughs> they promised a more aggressive uh, style, and they were more aggressive. And uh, they could have won more games, uh, uh, but they weren't ready to win more games because they had a rookie quarterback, and that's, uh, that's what you get when you start a rookie quarterback. Uh, uh, E.J. Manuel showed some uh, ability, um, but he, in the end, they were 29th in passing in the league, and uh, it's hard to win a lot of games in the NFL uh, today with the 29th best passing attack. Uh, now, you know, that partly they were 29th because they were, uh, they sort of constructed themselves to, to protect EJ, not too much, put too much load on EJ Manuel. Um, uh, and that made a lot of sense. But, uh, you know, next year he needs to take a step forward. I mean, his rookie numbers were comparable to lots of other rookie quarterbacks who played, Eli Manning and others, on and on and on. But uh, the quarterbacks who have panned out and made it all got a lot better in year two. Right. Well, you know, the NFL, first of all, it's, you know, to be a Peyton Manning, to be a Tom Brady, it comes over years and years and years. We're so used to turning people and the players into superstars after one year or one great performance. You look at, you look at EJ. He had a bad game against Tampa. He comes back with a solid game against Jacksonville. Fans were starting to feel better about not just, you know, EJ, but the team. He comes up with another knee injury, another injury that occurred during a game that was unnoticeable to everybody, including right. his head coach, until the next day. So now he misses the last two weeks, and suddenly, instead of optimism, people become pessimistic, not just about his playing ability, but this, this, this injury plague season that he had. I mean, three knee, knee injuries is unusual for any quarterback, let alone a, the first quarterback in the league. They seem to be uncertain as to what they have now with this player, even though he's played one year. Right, and I think you make a good point, the fact that he, if he had played the last two games, there might be a better taste in people's mouths, beating Miami, because they had Lewis beating right. uh, Miami. Uh, the reality is, no matter what happened in the last two games, they weren't going to, you still would be sitting here saying, I wonder what they have at quarterback and uh, you know the injuries and uh, durability is a huge question uh, uh, for all young quarterbacks uh, you know and, and in analyzing guys coming out of the draft durability is a huge piece of it how, how healthy can this guy stay so you know nobody has the answer to that I mean uh, is he gonna stay healthy or isn't he we just we're just gonna have to wait and see I mean uh, fans would love to have the security of having an Andrew Luck uh, who you knew after year one. But, I mean, uh, you know, it's, that's a real rarity. You think they'll draft a quarterback? No. God, no. I mean, maybe later in the draft, but they are not drafting a quarterback in the, uh, in the first or second round. No. I mean, they're sold. They spent all last spring evaluating, studying, agonizing, and decided EJ was their guy. And... Um, I, you know, and I actually, I don't think they should draft a quarterback this year for two reasons. Well, I think they need to give EJ another year. And I also think I don't see any quarterbacks out there who are likely to be available when they pick who are any greater odds of succeeding than EJ. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the good news, I, I guess, is either hopefully you're going to know at the end of year two, the 2015 class of quarterbacks is looking very pretty good. I mean, you never know for sure, but there's going to be numerous candidates uh, in 2015. And so really, um, you know, they need to have a great feeling. The, the odds were always that they weren't going to know for sure after this year. 
Uh, I mean, that was the 90% odds no matter what happened. So, but the key is being able to make a decision after year two. And, you know, the, and there's no guarantee of that. I mean, the last three quarterbacks the Bills have had went into year four as the starting yeah, before, quarterback yeah. <laughs> before the team decided to pull the plug. Now, Nate Hackett has taken some criticism. There's also been talk about should they bring in a quarterback coach? Is Nate Hackett able to both work with a young quarterback and, you know, style the offense? I was talking before the show. Last week we had Jim Kelly on the Fred Jackson show. He kind of uh, had fun with the fact that he thought Hackett was going to run a K-gun style Mm -hmm. no-huddle offense, and certainly that's not what they they had out there. But they were protecting a rookie quarterback, but I think his offense was much more vanilla than any of us thought it was going to be uh, when he came in here. Yeah, I think the big thing to keep in mind was, and and certainly as your question suggests, Nate Hackett has a lot to prove uh, in year two as well as the (laughs) offensive coordinator, without question. Um, I think they, everything they did this year has to be put through the specter of they were trying to do everything they could to make the rookie quarterback succeed. And really, in their eyes, he went four and six. Um, uh, so, um, you know, yes, they ran the ball. They, they took advantage of their two running backs. They're great at running back. They have two great running backs. And they took advantage to, of those guys the best they could. I mean, they ran the ball. I, I don't have the numbers offhand, but I, they ran the ball more than 50% of the time. Uh, at the league average is 58 or 59% passes. Um, so they uh, protected EJ. And, um, you know, I think that they need another weapon on offense. Before we wrap up this segment, we're looking at some, some still photos of CJ and Fred Jackson. And Fred Jackson is, is really a special guy. Isn't he? I mean, you've been around this team. I mean, yeah, you've you got to love Fred Jackson. I mean, he's a... a He's amazing. I mean, his ability, his, uh, uh, you know, he, he, running backs tend to be, uh, get all the adulation for their speed, uh, league-wide, you know, uh, and Fred is never going to wow you, never even when he was younger was, would wow you with his speed, but he has elite balance, uh, uh, contact balance, and, and, and his strength, he is deceivingly yeah. strong. Um, and his ability to bounce off the first hit and keep going, his yards after contact. I mean, he's been in the top three or four in yards after contact in the entire NFL since 2008. Um, so he is really phenomenal. And, uh, you know, in, in terms of his balance and strength, he is a freak of nature to a degree, you know, uh, uh, it, with, given those qualities. So, and, and the other thing is, I mean, he is getting old and uh, running backs have this clock, you know, where they expire. But uh, he has fewer touches even now at this point in his career than a lot of 28-year-olds. Uh, fewer touches than Adrian Peterson. Yeah. I mean, Adrian Peterson is, you know, all world in a different class. But still, uh, uh, there is certainly reason to think that the Bills can get another couple of years out of Fred. The thing that really impresses me is his, his desire. His desire yeah. to play. You know, we've talked about it. We've talked about it on a show because he got a late start. You know, he came up the hard way. He doesn't want to miss a rep. He doesn't want to miss a game. And he showed that this year playing hurt. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We're going to talk more to Mark on. And we're going to talk about a little bit also about Andre Reid and whether or not this is going to be Andre's year. We'll be back right after this. 